Kia ora te whanau. <laughs> got my drink. Have you got yours? Okay, then let's have a little chat. Kia ora, my dear ones, and welcome to another episode of Green Tea and Sanity. I have felt really moved today by a comment that I happened upon totally by accident in the threads uh, underneath one of my videos. One of my, it's a, it's, it's a video that is part of a really popular series of mine in terms of content um, on YouTube. Um, and it's the video series that it relates to my experience of um, emigrating to Aotearoa, to New Zealand, right? And um, it's very interesting. I mean, it's got to the point now where there's so many comments that I generally uh, don't read them anymore because this is like a, this vlog, these vlogs are about, you know, a year old, two years old nearly. So I, I made this series when we first um, kind of arrived, soon after we arrived in Aotearoa. And it was just, yeah, basically my impressions and the things that no one really tells you. <laughs> you know, one thing about New Zealanders, I'm going to include myself in this um, in this instance when I say this is that we are not good about um, thinking about you know where you know we're not perfect. <laughs> I mean, who is? No one likes to be uh, shown the their kind of shortcomings and stuff. But it's just really interesting how um, those videos attract a lot of racists. And a lot of people who, you know, have no need to to watch it. I mean, I, in my whole entire life, I never went on, on YouTube and searched for someone talking about my experience of coming to Britain. I don't give a F, you know, it's none of my business. It's not for me. Uh, but what you'll find if you look in the threads uh, under those videos is, is there's a lot of... Um, yeah, it's just very interesting to me as a psychotherapist to see that uh, defensiveness really. And uh, so, yeah, as I say, I have noticed this in myself as well, you know, uh, particularly around this year's big health issue and a certain world leader recently saying, you know, ish about us. I'm like, really, mate? Really? Don't you want to look in the mirror first? <laughs> so, you know, I can relate to it, but I think where that's difficult is that we, all of us, I mean, when I say we, I don't mean just Aotearoa, I don't mean any one country. I mean, all of us as human beings need to be way better at just being kind of more open um, to, you know, when criticism is constructive and, and based in and grounded in some, some real reality, I think it behooves us to listen, right? Um, but it's hard and we don't like doing that. That's why I have a job. That's why people, you know, no one can see the back of their own head. No one, no one likes to look at those things about themselves that, um, just paint them in a light that isn't really wonderful. Most of us don't really like doing that, you know? So I get it, but I think, you know, this comment that moved me anyway, really, um, it was very interesting because, for once it was it was actually you know the comments sometimes are really from from really disturbed people and racists and and a lot of nonsense that I just don't bother reading um but this was really insightful it was from someone who is an african person and um they the way they couched it i think was that an african person from africa and I thought that was kind of interesting too, you know, because obviously I'm an African person, but I'm really British as well. Like I'm basically um, of African heritage, but really I was born and raised in Britain. And, you know, you know, in terms of what I, who I am, obviously it's a blend, you you know, your biology and your DNA is always going to be that blend, but the your culture, the environment that you grew up in is obviously a huge part of who you are, who you become, you know? So, um, so yeah, so that was their perspective, you know, as an African who is from Africa, that's the way they catched it. And one of the first things that they said that I thought was really, you know, just kind of painful to read and kind of funny as well, uh, was that they, you know, they were basically warning someone else off in the comment section of ever coming here. And especially if they were black, um, they said it's like living in an expensive rainforest. But straight away for me, I just thought, yeah, and I love that. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> you know, I think the thing that it left me with it was really poignant comment. And I, I don't even know if I'd find it again, to be honest. There's so many, there's that many comments underneath this particular um, part of the series. Um, but what really struck me, what I was left with was just this issue of belonging. You know, and I love what Beyonce said recently. It was an Instagram post um, and she was... She, this was, I think, at the um, launch of Black is King. The line that really moved me in Beyonce's post was something along the lines of, I'm going to have to paraphrase it because I don't remember the exact words that she used, but it was something along the lines of, um, in 2020, we've all been searching for safety and light. Um, and I thought that was so beautiful. Um it was really beautiful, I thought, the way she captured that kind of universal truth about all of us. And I would say that that goes way beyond just 2020. I think we are all searching for those things. Um, and so there's a combination of factors that, that leave me thinking about how we divide up this planet and decide that this part is called this country and so these people in that cut in that place can't come here you know and they don't look like us so you know just these divisions that we've created really that are really interesting when you break it down then it's just all one planet one earth one you know human race you know i find that fascinating but yeah this issue of belonging I find really interesting because, you know, this person, this African woman had such a terrible experience in Aotearoa of the worst of us, I guess, the worst of it, you know, in terms of the racism and the, I just, I just was really, I found it really moving um, and quite sad. Um, and yet I almost think that any one of us could almost have a similar, particularly if we're brown or black, could have a similar experience in our, even the place that we're from genetically, you know, in terms of our, um, in terms of our bloodline, you know, I have literal family in Nigeria, for example, where my heritage um, reaches back to. But I also have people who I'm just close to, who I consider like family, who happen, for example, to live in Nigeria or America or, you know, I've got family online as well as offline. And so as a result of that, I have a finger on the pulse of, you know, what's going on, for example, on a daily basis in places like Nigeria. Um, not maybe exactly where my parents were born and where I'm where, you know, my um, my parents tribe are from. But, you know, obviously, if I'd been born there, if I had been grown up there, you know, it's impossible to know how my life would be. But, you know, there isn't this universal sense of belonging for all the people who live there. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of really challenging things happening in America. You know, for African-American men, the UN have said that um, they meet all the criteria, actually, for seeking asylum. So that's how welcome they feel. Um in Britain, you know, I have people writing to me and telling me how they fear for their children because they are now being treated like foreigners in their own home. They were born and raised there. So again, if I was in the UK, maybe I would feel that too. I certainly felt it after Brexit, like it wasn't my home anymore. Like I wasn't welcome. Um, that's, that's the place I was born. So it's not to diminish what this person was sharing, but I just think it raises a bigger issue. Um, and a really kind of universal one. If you put the news on and you see the migrants who are dying, trying to get to Britain, where, you know, no doubt they, they would maybe have more food in their bellies. But some of those people go to Britain and find that their life is so miserable because of the racism, because of the other issues that they, you know, they're not necessarily going to wish that they never made the journey. But, you know, I think this issue of belonging is is a more profound one. And how do we get around it if the world doesn't approve of us you know I meet with this with my with my patients and my clients who are transgender and in many cases unless they live in a quite progressive part of the world quite often in my experience I mean one would hope that in 2020 and beyond it's changing but quite often you know my trans patients don't feel like they belong and they're you know really 
not even safe where they live. You know, they were certainly born there. I mean, it's not it's not to do with their race always. Uh, there might be an intersection of of racial issues, of social issues, and their their gender. But quite often, it's just basically people disapprove of them so deep. So, you know, I'm not trying to say that this makes any of it okay. None of this is okay. It's awful. And yet, I guess what I come back to is a sense that, you know, I think we have to go a bit deeper to find belonging now, maybe. Um, that if the world doesn't approve of you, what are you going to do? You're here already. You know, you've got to live somewhere. Um and you know you need you deserve to be happy so i don't know i don't have answers really i just have probably just more questions and um there are I, in my view there are no simple answers to these kinds of dilemmas but that post really moved me that 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 comment really moved me um and it really made me think it made me think about my own privilege which this this person actually referenced um which is very real. And I've spoken about that in my other recent videos. And maybe I'll add a link somewhere so you can go check them out rather than me repeating myself. Um, I just finished work, but I wanted to capture this, just just some raw thoughts really um, about love and belonging. And I guess just the imperative, you know, for all of us to be kinder, to be more loving, to learn about those who are different from us so that we're not always you know, in our own small minded fear and being evil and vicious to people who don't look like us, don't pray like us, you know, it, it's just insane, really, when you really think about it. But the thing is, the truth is, the people who are, are open to that kind of message are already halfway there anyway. You know, the people who were cruel and racist to this woman who came to New Zealand, I, I don't know under what circumstances, I also feel like she was on her own. And I don't think I would emigrate anywhere. On, no, that I'll re retract that. I, you know, this isn't the first country I considered moving to as a British person, right? British born. Um, and, you know, America was really way up there. You know, I lived in California for a while and I absolutely loved it. And a lot of people would roll their eyes and go, oh, California is horrible. And, all you know, people who are really right wing would probably say that. And, you know, various people would have opinions about that. But I found belonging. I found belonging there. I found belonging in Italy. I considered living in Italy and I spent many, many weeks and days. And, you know, it was just a, a quick plane ride away, you know, and I had a reason to be there. Uh, and I considered a job offer, you know, I was offered a job there. So, you know, it's not like this is the first country I ever thought of emigrating to. Uh, and in all those places, I found belonging. And I think, you know, again, I'm not kind of diminishing anyone's experience here. So please don't misunderstand that. But I do think that there has to be some internal light, some internal awareness and a baseline that we each have to know that we deserve to be, to exist in the first place. And that where we happen to live, you know, it can be, it can be nice. It can be not nice. It can be racist. It can be slightly less racist. It can be transphobic or not transphobic. And and again, I don't advocate for accepting any of this, these things that don't deserve a place in our world, as far as I'm concerned, racism, transphobia, all of these things, because all of us as human beings deserve respect deserve love and kindness. Those are base things. There's, there's not too much to ask for for anybody. Um, and who are we to judge another person, another human being, when we are also human and fallible and imperfect? Um, but nonetheless, if the world chooses not to accept us or the place where you live, then, you know, you better accept yourself. You know, you better love yourself. You better know somehow and again the how of getting to this is the big question and that will be different for everybody you know i think when we have a, a strong foundation a strong base that we come from love and we somehow know that then almost it, it it's makes it much easier to live anywhere really because your internal landscape is already fertile and lush and nourishing uh, and that obviously starts to take us into the realms of spirituality or faith or religion or something that helps you feel like you, you know, 
irrevocably you belong yeah and that and this is something that cannot be taken away from you um and i think that's where even religion has its place not that you know i mean religion comes with a lot of other problems but in in many respects it gives a sense of belonging to many people it doesn't matter what religion you know so in that respect it's profoundly valuable um but i think we have to find our own way and um you know, and, and talk about the things that, the and talk about the difficulties where we don't feel like we belong, you know. Um, I don't think we will get anywhere without owning up to the difficulties and trying our best to kind of wrestle with these themes. I don't think that's the solution either, just to bury one's head in the sand. Um, and I don't, I don't know about you. Um, do you speak up for people who are different to you when they're being bullied or you know, so these are the questions I think we need to ask ourselves. It's not enough to just stand by and and say, oh, well, I, aren't I the lucky one because I fit into this, you know, category of people where whatever, you know, one of the things this person said to me was the fact that I'm British is going to lend me some privilege. And she's absolutely right. My accent even. So, you know, I don't know. It would be nice if we thought about the world that our children, our families, our young ones are going to inherit and conduct ourselves in such a way that, that w would potentially make them proud in the future, you know, and to have that integrity, um, really to honour the places where we find ourselves as well. I think that's hugely important. I think in a way that opens up a way of belonging I have definitely found that in Altero and that is almost more of an internal process. You know, for me, part of that maybe is learning Te Reo Māori. Um, for me personally, these are very personal things, so everyone would have to find their own way. But, you know, I feel like honouring the Indigenous culture, the Indigenous people has almost opened up a, a way for me to feel like I belong, you know? So yeah, just some thoughts, really random, really random guys, it's late, <laughs> but I wanted to share these with you and um, maybe they will spark something for you as well. And um, thank you so much for being with me. It's always a joy to share these moments with you. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Green Tea Insanity. <laughs>